everybody. Welcome to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and this is Lesson 4 of Strategic Cost Management, Cost Volume Profit Analysis. At the end of the video, you should be able to discuss the relationship of cost, volume of sales and profit and how it affects or helps in managerial decision making. Define and explain CVP analysis. Explain terms relevant to CVP analysis. Discuss key assumptions of the CVP analysis. Determine the break-even point using the contribution margin approach, equation approach, target net income approach, and through graphing CVP relationships. Apply CVP analysis through safety margin and analysis of CVP relationships in terms of changes in fixed cost, variable cost, selling price, and volume. Compute for the break-even point in CVP relationships in a multiple product setup and explain the role of cost structure and operating leverage in CVP relationships. This is your management accounting trainer, Kevin Troy M. Chua. Before anything else, please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button to alert you of the latest video lessons. Please comment down your questions, suggestions, and reactions. Thank you very much for trusting Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH as your online learning partner. And our featured subscriber for this lesson is Ms. Marinel Dionaldo from Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Manila. If you want to become a featured subscriber, just send me your phone photo with you using Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. Again, thank you very much for your support for Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and entrusting me with your online learning discussions. Maraming maraming salamat po. Our last lesson is about absorption and variable costing and now we will continue um, adding up your knowledge with variable costing into another lesson which is CVP analysis or the cost volume profit analysis and that starts now. <laughs> Okay, so variable costing. Balikan po natin yung inyo pong variable costing income statement. So as you know, sige, open ko lang aking laser pointer. Okay, yan po. It starts with sales and then you deduct your variable cost which will give you your contribution margin. And then you deduct your fixed cost and you will be given your net income. Ulitin lang po natin yung pinagkaiba niya with absorption costing, no? In absorption costing, you are segregating costs as to cost of goods sold and operating expenses under GAAP. However, in variable costing, we are segregating it if it is a variable cost or a fixed cost and more so about fixed cost all of the fixed costs incurred during the period, hindi siya ini split into the goods that were sold and goods na naiiwan sa inventory. Talagang kung ano yung fixed cost mo during the period, yun po yung ipapasok mo bilang fixed cost na ima minus mo sa contribution margin to get your net income. Okay, so that's how we do variable costing. Okay, so what we include in your variable cost includes all of your direct materials, direct labor variable manufacturing overhead and variable selling and administrative expenses and then in your total fixed cost naman po syempre lahat ng manufacturing selling and administrative costs incurred during a specific period okay so that's how we do income measurement for internal purposes or internal decision making purposes which is called your contribution margin income statement more commonly known as variable costing bakit ko po siya inintroduce sa inyo kasi this concept of variable costing is the concept that we will be using in the totality of our lesson for today about CVP analysis okay so now let's talk about CVP analysis cost volume profit analysis the CVP analysis is a powerful tool that helps managers understand the relationships among cost, volume, and profit. When we say volume, yung units no, na kasama natin ina-analyze, basically yung units ng product na nabibenta natin. Okay? CVP analysis focuses on, pro on how profits are affected by the following five factors. So first factor is, syempre, selling price na kung magkano natin binibenta yung ating products. And then the next is sales volume. How many units do we sell? And then the variable cost per unit associated with the products that we sell. And then total fixed cost and your product mix. In any case, that you have multiple products in your entity. 
Okay? So, yan po yung ating uh, cost, volume, profit analysis. Tinitignan natin yung relationship nilang lahat at kung paano po ba nakaka-apekto itong ating mga factors na ito and the entity's profitability. Basically, in CVP analysis, you need your knowledge about variable costing because as you can see, it's also the things that we will be learning today. Sales, variable cost, fixed cost. So it's a it's an upgraded version of your variable costing. So we will be using your CVP analysis that is in line with the decision making that will be done by the entity, the managers and the owners so that they will know Paano ba tayo magiging profitable? Ano kaya yung dapat nating malaman technique? Later on, you will know kung ano po ba yung mga dapat i-decide ng company at bakit ba tayo nagsi-CVP analysis. Okay, so before we formally start with our discussion, <laughs> di ba pala tayo nag-uumpisa? Okay, so let me define some of the terms that we will be encountering in this lesson. Okay, first one is the break-even point. Break-even point is the point where operationally, there is no profit and no loss. Ibig sabihin po, zero ang net income. This is the point where all sales are equal to total variable cost and total fixed cost, thereby presenting a net income of zero. Pag sinabi po nating break-even point, kung ano po yung sales mo, the sales are able to cover your variable cost and fixed cost which will give you a net income of zero. Wala kang profit pero hindi ka rin naman loss. Ibig sabihin, your sales are able to cover all of your variable and fixed cost. Okay? Pag sinabi mong break-even point, kumbaga in layman's term, eh, kapag ka po nagkakaroon sila ng business, eh, parang bawi lang ang puhunan. Hindi kumita, pero hindi rin naman lugi. Nabawi lang yung ginastos. Parang ganon. Okay? Yun po yung break-even point natin. At break-even point, your net income is zero because your sales are able to cover all of your cost. Okay? Now, ito namang contribution margin, alam nyo na to, hindi ba? Contribution margin is the difference between the entity sales and variable cost. So, if you deduct sales to variable cost, that is your contribution margin. If selling price per unit is deducted with the variable cost per unit, it becomes contribution margin per unit. So, in our example here, let's assume na 10,000 units yung nabenta natin. So, 400,000 divided by 10,000, that's 40 pesos ang selling price. And then, 280,000 at 10,000 units, ibig sabihin, variable cost per unit is 28. 40 minus 28, your contribution margin per unit is 12. You can also get that by 120,000 divided by 10,000, which is 12. Yun din po yun. Now, another concept that you need to know when contribution margin is divided naman to sales a percentage is obtained called the contribution margin ratio so if you divide 12 to 40 that is 30 percent that is your contribution margin ratio similarly 28 divided by 40 that is 70 percent yan naman po yung iyong variable cost ratio and syempre your sales is represented by 100 percent kung matatandaan nyo po yung tinuro sa Fundamentals of Accountancy Business and Management Part 2 na Vertical Analysis, yung pagkuha natin ng mga percentages dun sa inyong mga financial statements, it works the same way, okay? So, 12 divided by 40, 30%. Ibig sabihin, 30% of your sales ang contribution margin. Yun yung iyong contribution margin ratio, okay? So, again, contribution margin is the difference between your sales and variable cost. But if it is already expressed per unit, edi ang tawag po dun, contribution margin per unit. Pero kapag ka divide mo na sa contribution margin to your sales, ang tawag na po dun is contribution margin ratio. Later on, we will also be discussing about the margin of safety. Pag sinabi naman pong margin of safety, it's the difference between yung actual or budgeted sales mo versus yung break-even sales na i-analyze natin later. Ang gustong sabihin ng margin of safety, o, oh, ito lang yung amount na pwede mong ibaba pa yung sales mo hanggang hindi ka pa nagbe-break-even. Kasi pag bumaba ka pa ng break-even point mo, maglolos ka na. So, later on, i-expound natin 
yung concept nyo ng margin of safety. And then, syempre, ganun din po, if you divide naman po yung iyong margin of safety sa pinanggalingan mong analysis ng actual or budgeted sales, ang lalabas naman po ay margin of safety ratio. Pwede rin po siyang makuha daw by dividing your profit ratio and the contribution margin ratio. And later on din po, yan din po ay expound natin. Another thing that you need to understand ay yung tinatawag po nating sales mix. Ang sales mix naman po ay nangyayari sa isang company na marami silang products na binibenta. Okay? Sales mix is the combination of products that in total will compose the reported sales of an entity which is applicable to multiple product line companies. Ilang units ba yun na bibenta nila ng product A, product B, and product C? And pag pinagsama-sama natin yun, yun po kasi yung total sales na ng company. Okay? So, magkakompute din po tayo mamaya ng analysis natin ng break-even point na paano naman po kung multiple product line po yung meron yung company. Okay, ngayon, ano po ba ang mga pag-uusapan natin sa CVP analysis at ano po ba yung mga assumptions sa ating CVP analysis? First assumption is, costs are classified as variable and fixed. Basically, in CVP analysis, we will be using variable costing. Okay, so ang classification po natin ng cost, variable and fixed, hindi po Uh, cost of goods sold and operating expenses. Okay? So, pang internal decision making po kasi ito. Kaya ang gagamitin natin, variable costing. Variable cost change at ang linear rate. So, kumbaga pag in rough, eh, straight line lang siya. No? Um, kung, kumbaga, ganun naman po talaga ang nature ng variable cost, di ba? Habang tumataas ang sales mo, variable cost mo tataas din. Okay? So, ganun po. Fixed cost remains unchanged, syempre, within the, the relevant range. No? As long as we are in the, within the relevant range, fixed cost mo constant yan. Selling prices do not change as sales volume changes. So, medyo hindi tayo magkakaroon ng fluctuations dito ng selling price. Kung ano yung pag-uusapan nating selling price sa mga problem, stay lang siya doon. No? Uh, hindi tayo mag-uusap ng mga sales price adjustments. No? So, ang assumption natin here in CVP analysis, your selling price doesn't change. Another assumption is for multiple product companies, constant lang din po yung sales mix. No? Uh, this number of uh, product A and this number of product B, usually constant lang siya based sa observation ng entity. And then, inventory levels remain constant and it is not uh, focused too much in CVP analysis. Ang iniisip po natin, yung inventory natin, ay uh, kung uh, it just remains constant no walang uh, extraordinary uh, na parang fluctuations walang extraordinary na mga special orders no kung ano lang yung normal operations natin it just remains constant okay and then volume is the greatest factor affecting cost kasi ang pinag-uusapan natin dito unit sold no yung number of units talaga yung pag-uusapan natin na ito po yung magiging greatest factor na makakaapekto sa ating cost at hindi lamang sa cost yung mismong CVP analysis natin nakadepende talaga siya sa volume okay so those are the key assumptions in CVP analysis okay so let's now try to dig deeper about CVP analysis using the contribution margin approach look at this equation sabi natin pag break even point, ito daw po yung level ng sales na bawi lang lahat ng ginastos natin. Wala tayong net income, wala tayong luge na bawi lang talaga lahat ng gastos. Okay? So, kung titignan nyo mabuti, sales minus variable cost, your contribution margin is 120,000 which is able to cover naman all of your fixed cost. Kaya wala siyang kinita pero wala rin naman siyang luge. Now, one thing that you need to see is this one. If you multiply the sales in units by the contribution margin per unit, ang tawag na po doon, total contribution margin. Siyempre, kung ilan yung nabenta mo, mumultiply mo yung contribution margin per unit, siyempre, ang lalabas yung mismong ito na, yung total contribution margin. Tapos, eh di siyempre, babalik ta rin lang natin yung equation na nasa taas, ito, babalik ta rin lang natin to ng konti, uh, iibahin lang natin ng konting equation. So, ang mangyayari po is 
contribution margin divided by contribution margin per unit, edi syempre ang lalabas naman yung number of units na nabenta mo. Hindi ba? Kaso, ang sabi po natin, at break-even point, your fixed cost is equals to your contribution margin. Totoo naman po, your contribution margin is able to cover your fixed cost at break-even point. Kaya po, ang formula natin in getting your break-even point in units is yung fixed cost mo, pag dinivide mo sa CM per unit, yun na po yung break-even point mo in units. Ibig sabihin po, yan po yung number of units that the entity needs to sell in order for them to break even. And why is the formula like this? If you look again on this green line, contribution margin divided by contribution margin per unit is number of units sold. And at break even point, this contribution margin is equal to your fixed cost. So you can just substitute it. Your fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit is your break even point in units. Ganun lang siya kasimple. Kaya po, ang ating pong formula, ganito. Your break-even point in units is fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit. Ano po sir yung break-even point in units? Yan po yung number of units that the entity needs to sell in order for them to cover all of their variable and fixed cost. Basically, to break even. Kung sakali naman po ang gusto ng company makita is break-even point kung magkano, in terms of peso or peso sales, fixed cost divided by contribution margin ratio na po ang gagamitin natin. Ang lalabas naman po dito, break-even point in sales. Ibig sabihin po, break-even point na naka-peso amount na siya ng sales. And for you to further understand these equations and these formulas, let's apply it through a problem. Teddy Company is a manufacturer of teddy bears which currently sells at 250 pesos per unit. Ang variable cost per unit daw po ay 80 pesos materials, 50 pesos labor, 20 pesos variable overhead, and 10 pesos variable selling and administrative expense. Fixed cost daw po, 90,000. Marunong na po kayong mag-compute ng uh, inyong net income under variable costing kasi napag-aralan na po natin yun in the previous lesson. Ganun lang din po yung gagawin natin dito. Yun nga lang, magdedetermine na po tayo ng break-even point. We have four questions. Magkano daw po ang contribution margin per unit at CM ratio? And then, ilan daw po dapat yung units na mabenta nila para bawi ang ginastos. And then, syempre, yung break-even point ni naman po natin in peso sales. And we will also be computing the break-even point. What if we will be doing it mathematically? Okay, so let's answer this problem. For number one, how much is the CM per unit and the CMR? Ganti lang po yan. If your selling price per unit is 250 and then you deduct all of your variable costs, which is materials of 80, labor of 50, overhead of 20, and selling and administrative of 10, that gives you a total variable cost per unit of 160. You deduct the selling price per unit to the variable cost per unit. Yun na po yung contribution margin per unit. 90 pesos per unit. Now, for your contribution margin ratio, you just have to, uh, to divide, sorry. You just have to divide your contribution margin per unit to your selling price per unit. 90 divided by 250, your CM ratio is 36%. It means that 36% of your sales is your contribution margin. And that is your answer for number one. Now, for number two, how many units should the entity sell every month in order for them to break even? Gagamitin po natin yung fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit. If your fixed cost is 90,000, you divide it by the contribution margin per unit of 90, 1,000 units daw po yung dapat nilang mabenta para po bawi lahat ng ginastos during that month. You can also use the... Uh, variable income statement natin na approach. Paano po yun? Di ba sabi po natin at break-even point, your net income is zero. And if your fixed cost is 90, then automatically your contribution margin is 90,000. Then you just have to divide it by the contribution margin per unit. Di ba pareho lang? So 90,000 divided by 90, lalabas pa rin po yung 1,000 units. Di ba madali lang? Okay. Number three po tayo. How much sales should the entity achieve every month in order naman po for them to break even? So, ganito lang po gagawin natin. Imbis po na sa contribution margin per unit i-deduct, 
uh, sorry, I divide um, fixed cost of ninety thousand divided by contribution margin ratio of thirty six percent. Your break even point in peso sales is two hundred fifty thousand. Ibig sabihin daw po, in terms of peso sales, dapat naman daw po generate ng sales ang company worth two hundred fifty thousand pesos in order for them to break even. Ngayon po kung ayaw mong dumaan sa contribution margin ratio, this is what you do. Di ba nakuha na po natin kanina yung break even point in units natin na one hundred and sorry na 1,000 units, pero yung selling price mo po kasi 250. You just simply multiply it to the selling price per unit, 1,000 times 250, that gives you a break-even point in peso sales of 250,000. Pareho lang po ng kalalabasan. Kung ayaw mo nyan, dito ka sa variable costing income statement, ganito po gagawin mo. At break-even point, your net income is zero. If your fixed cost is 90, your CM is also 90. Itapat mo yung 36% sa kanya para alam mong doon mo siya i-divide. So, 90 divided by 36, lalabas yung sales. So, 90 divided by 36, that is 250,000. And that is your answer for number 3. For number 4 naman po, let's do it mathematically. So, paano naman po pag equation approach? Pag equation approach, ang gagawin niyo po is your net income is equals to sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost. That is your net income. So, gawin po natin siya algebraically. At break-even point, your net income is zero. Is equals to selling price of 250 multiplied by X. Ano po yung X? Yung hindi mo makalimutan. De joke lang. Yung X po yung number of units na nabenta. Minus 160 naman po yung variable cost per unit mo multiplied by the number din po ng uh, units na nabenta mo. Minus your total fixed cost of 90,000. So, pagsamahin po natin yung dalawang X, total dun sila magaling. Diba? De joke lang. Okay. So, uh, 250 minus uh, 160, so 90 X. Kung mapapansin nyo po, 250 minus 160, eh di ba ito rin naman po yung contribution margin per unit natin? So, 90 X minus 90,000. Transpose 90x to the other side. Negative 90x is equals to negative 90,000. Then divide both sides by 90x is equals to 1,000 units. Kung papansin ninyo po mabuti, 90,000 is your fixed cost. 90 is your CM per unit. E di ganun din, fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit. And you will still get your 1 thousand units. In any case that you want to do it mathematically, ganito po kunin ang break-even point kung equation approach. Okay, so I hope uh, that uh, you, you were able to understand uh, from that perspective and let's continue adding up with your learning paano naman po mag-graph ng CVP relationship. Ganito po mag-graph no, ng ating CVP relationship. Dito po sa x-axis nyo po ilalagay si number of units sold and your sales and cost prices naman po will be in the Anong tawag dito? Y-axis. Okay. Um, ganito po, no? Kasi po, syempre, ang revenue, pag wala kang nabenta, edi eh, zero. Pero pag marami kang benta, andun ka napupunta. Ito na yung revenue mo. Pero ang total cost po natin, bakit banda dito nagumpisa? Kasi, at zero production and at zero sales, eh, ikaw pa rin naman po ay may ma incur na fixed cost. Kaya po, dito ang start niya. Pero syempre, paangat din po siya dahil meron po siyang effect ng variable cost. The point where they need meet, yan po yung break-even point. Kapag ka po nandito tayo sa area ng ito, yan na po yung profit area. At dito naman po sa baba ng break-even point, yan naman po yung loss area. Ganyan po ang interpretation ng graphing natin ng CVP relationship. Ngayon po, ang gagawin natin ay gagawin po natin yung problem na to para po tayo ay makapag-graph ng CVP relationship. Prepare the break-even graph for Meow Company based on the following information. So, meron po tayo net sales na 500,000, variable cost of 300,000, so your contribution margin is 200,000, fixed cost of 150,000, and net income of 50,000. The unit sold is 50,000 units. So, 500,000 divided by 50,000 units, your selling price is 10 pesos per unit. Then, you just do it, uh, you just do the same thing, so your contribution margin per unit is 4. Okay? So, ganito po gagawin natin pag mag-graph po tayo ng CVP relationship. Okay, gagawin niyo po siya ng matrix. Paano po yung matrix? At zero units sold, edi syempre wala kang benta at wala ka ring variable cost. Pero syempre, kahit wala kang benta, meron ka pa rin namang gastos as to fixed cost. That's why your total cost is 150. 
Tapos, gawa naman natin ng next step. What if 10,000 units na po yan na benta? So, 10,000 units multiplied by 10 pesos selling price per unit, which is 100,000. And then, 10,000 units times variable cost of 6, that is your variable cost of 60,000. Okay? And then, add nyo po sa fixed cost na 150,000, your total cost is 210,000. Gawin nyo rin po yung system na yan, hanggang 20, 30, 40, hanggang 50,000 units. Okay? Hanggang sa mabuo mo yung sales, variable cost, fixed cost, and total cost up to 50,000 units. Kasi po, yan na po yung gagamitin nating information para makagawa ng plotting ng points sa inyong Cartesian plane. Ulitin lang po natin. Sabi po natin ang nasa x-axis is the number of units sold and yung nasa y-axis naman po natin is yung atin pong sales prices and cost prices. So, ganito po gagawin natin. At 0 units sold, 0 din ang revenue. So, ito po yun, yung green na point. Okay? 10,000 units, ito po yun, nandito yun, ito yung 10,000. Kasi 50,000 to, di ba? So, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000. So, 10,000 units, ang revenue mo daw po, 100,000. So, ito po yun, 100,000. Then, diretsahin na natin para mabilis, 50,000 naman pong units, ang revenue naman daw po is 500,000. Okay? So, ito po yung magiging revenue line natin. Yung green. Okay? Ngayon naman po, paplat natin yung fixed cost. So, at zero units sold, ang fixed cost mo, 150,000. Kaya dun siya magsa-start. Kahit wala kang nabenta, may fixed cost kang 150,000. Okay? And then, dun naman po sa 50,000 units, ang total cost po natin, 450,000. So, nasan po yun? Ito po yung 50,000. Ito po yung total cost of 450,000. So, yun naman po red dots natin. Yun naman po yung ating total cost. The point where they meet is yun po yung ating break-even point, which is your break-even point in sales is 375,000 and your break-even point in units is 37,500. So, pwede na po kayong gumamit ng CVP relationships para naman po kayo ay makapag-check uh, ng break-even point. Okay? So, I hope that you understand how to do graphing of your CVP relationships. Now, lagyan naman na po natin ng uh, CVP analysis pero meron ka ng gustong ma-target na net income. Mag magkakaroon na ng konting variation yung ating uh, uh, dito, formula kanina. No? So, required units na kailangan mo daw po mabenta is ganito daw po kukunin. Fixed cost plus target net income divided by CM per unit kung units yung gusto mo makita. Pero kapag ka naman po sales price, Ganun pa rin naman po, i-divide nyo naman po siya sa contribution margin ratio. Pero, paano po tong target net income? Kung ang binigay po, excuse me, kung ang binigay po sa problem is naka before tax, wala na po kayong problema, i-add nyo na po diretso yung target net income. Pero pag ang binigay po sa inyo sa problem ay naka after tax, kailangan nyo po siyang ibalik muna sa before tax. Okay? So, i-re-add nyo po yung tax effect niya. Kasi dapat po yung target net income natin dito is before tax effect po. Dahil yung ating pong variable costing na analysis at saka CVP analysis, ang kailangan po nating analysis sa kanya is earnings before interest and taxes. Okay? So, wala pa po yung mga tax effect at saka wala pa po yung mga finance cost effect like interest. Okay? So, ganun po kasi yung ating CVP analysis. Okay. So, same problem lang po kanina, but this time, ang kanila daw pong net income na gustong ma-achieve sa buhay ay 270,000. So, ang tanong po, ilang units naman yung dapat nilang mabenta para ma-achieve tong 270,000? And in peso sales, magkano daw po yung sales dapat nila to get that 270,000? Okay? So, this is why we do it. Okay, so number one, how many units should the entity sell every month in order to achieve the target net income? So, ganito po. Your fixed cost is 90,000 and then you add your desired net income of 270,000. So, ang dapat mo daw pong ma-achieve na contribution margin is 360,000. Then you divide it by the, uh, the contribution margin per unit na 90, target sales in units, 4,000 units. Or pwede rin pong gantong paraan idadaan mo sa income statement. Kung ang target net income mo ay 270,000 at ang fixed cost mo ay 90, so work back ka. 270 plus 90, 360. 
Okay? Tapos divide mo dun sa 90, lalabas yung number of units na dapat mong ibenta, 4,000 units. Di ba madali lang? Kasi iya-add mo lang yung desired net income mo dun sa fixed cost. Tapos di-divide mo lang din uli siya sa CM. Di ba? Ngayon, for number 2, ganito naman po gagawin mo ngayon. Okay? So, ganun pa rin po, you will add uh, fixed cost sa desired net income. So, that is your contribution margin to achieve. Pero, i-divide mo na siya this time sa contribution margin ratio. So, your target sales in peso sales is 1 million. Or, kung 4,000 units yung target mong benta kanina, you just multiply it by the selling price of 250, yun na po yung target sales in peso sales mo, 1 million. Or, you can also do this approach uli. Kung 270,000 ang target net income mo, and then i-add mo po si fixed cost, that is your contribution margin, divided by the CM ratio. Itatapat mo lang doon, you will get the 1 million. Okay? So, ganun po ang pagkuha po natin ng required number of units or required sales level para naman po i-analyze kung sakaling meron tayong tina-target na amount ng net income. Let's now move on to your CVP analysis through margin of safety. Ang margin of safety po ay ang measurement of the potential effect of the risk that sales will fall short of planned sales, which is the difference between your actual or budgeted sales and break-even sales. Ibig sabihin po, pag sinabing margin of safety, kung ito yung break-even sales mo at ito yung budgeted sales mo, dapat yung sales mo ay within that certain margin lamang. Kasi kapag ka ikaw ay bumaba na sa break-even point mo, ay wala na, sorry ka, nasa loss area ka na nun. So, ibig sabihin ng margin of safety, kung ito yung budget ko at ito yung break-even ko, dapat nandun lang yung sales ko para meron na akong net income. Okay? So, yun po yung sinasabi nating margin of safety. Okay. So, let's uh, solve this problem. Charlotte Manufacturing Company's budget for the coming year revealed the following unit data. So, meron pong budgeted net income na 875,000. Binigyan po kayo ng variable cost per unit. And then, based on the 875,000 budgeted net income, ito daw po yung naging average fixed cost per unit. And then, the unit selling price is 50 pesos. Completein daw po natin ang margin of safety in peso amount and in percentage ng Charlotte Manufacturing Company. Okay, so your first step is to do this. If your selling price per unit po is 50 and your variable cost per unit is 14 plus 2.5 plus 0.25, so that is 16.75. Then, your CM per unit is 33.25. Now, i-deduct nyo po si fixed cost per unit kasi naka per unit siya, di ba? Since naka per unit po yung information, ganito po yung magagawa mo talagang income statement. So, net income per unit mo is 8.75. So, ngayon, makoconnect mo na siya. Kung ang net income per unit natin is 8.75 and your budgeted net income is 875,000, you know the drill. Parang malalaman mo ngayon kung ilan yung units na nabenta mo. But before that, huwag nyo pong kakalimutan yung mga analysis nyo ganito. Kunin nyo na rin agad si contribution margin ratio. Baka kailanganin mo mamaya. Okay? So, next step. If your budgeted net income is 875,000 and the net income per unit is 8.75, that means na ang nabenta mo daw po is 100,000. If you multiply it by the selling price of 50, then your sales had been 5 million. Now, Ang average fixed cost mo daw po is 24.5 nung nakabenta ka ng 100,000 units kasi inexpress siya per unit eh. So that's the only thing that we can do, you multiply them. So your total fixed cost is 20 uh, sorry, 2,450,000 and then you divide it by the CM ratio of 66.5. Your break even sales naman po is 3,684,210. Ano po tong equation na to? Kinuha ko lang yung break even point, fixed cost divided by CM ratio. So, break-even point in peso sales is 3,684,210.53. to 10.53. Bakit? Ang kailangan po natin sa pagkuha ng inyong margin of safety is budgeted sales and break-even sales. Because of that, dahil meron na po tayo ng dalawa, makukuha na po natin si 
margin of safety. So if your budgeted sales is 5 million and your break even sales is 3, 6, 8, 4, 2, 10.53, your margin of safety in peso is 1,315,789.427. Hanggang ganyan lang dapat bumaba ang sales mo. Kasi pag bumaba ka na ng lower pa dun sa 3, 8, 6, 4, 2, 10 mong break even point, nasa loss area ka na. So itong margin of safety mo hanggang dyan ka lang dapat para hindi ka magkalos. Now, if you divide your margin of safety to your budgeted sales, your margin of safety ratio is 26.32%. Ngayon, sabi natin kanina, pwede rin daw po yung ganitong paraan na dadaan daw po tayo sa profit ratio at contribution margin ratio to get your margin of safety ratio. So, i-reconstruct muna natin yung variable costing income statement para magawa yung analysis na to. So, 100,000 units sold times 50, that's 5 million. And then, 100,000 times 16.75 for your variable cost, that's 1,675. Gives you this contribution margin. Less your total fixed cost of 2,450, your net income is ito po, yung lumabas, which is 875,000. First step is you get your profit ratio. Profit ratio is your net income divided your sales. So, 875,000 divided by 5 million is 17.5%. Then you get your contribution margin ratio, which is your contribution margin of 3325 divided by your sales of 5 million. So your contribution margin ratio is 66.5%. Now, pwede nyo rin daw pong kunin yung margin of safety ratio by dividing your profit ratio to your contribution margin ratio. So 17.5 divided by 66.5, that is your margin of safety ratio of 26.32%. Pareho lang po. Okay. Ngayon, ba't natin kinumpute yan? Anong essence? Ganito po kasi yan. Compute na po natin yung profit using the margin of safety and the CM ratio. Bakit kaya? Tina natin. Ang margin of safety mo po is 1,315,789.47. Tapos yung CM ratio mo po ay 66.5%. Pag pinag-multiply mo daw pong dalawa yan, ang lalabas na net income, 875,000. Bakit natin nakuha yung net income? Ito po ang rason. The contribution margin from the sales attributable to the margin of safety becomes the profit because at break-even point, all fixed costs had already been recovered. With that, any contribution margin in the sales above the break-even point become the net income or becomes the net income. Okay, ulitin natin. At break-even point po, di ba? Zero net income natin. So anything na ta taas above the break-even point Ibig sabihin, may profit ka na nun, di ba? Kasi umangat ka na eh. Umangat ka na ng break-even point, ibig sabihin, may profit ka na nun. E di ba, ano ba konsepto natin ng margin of safety? Yun po yung level kung saan pwede kang magpalaro-laro at magpaikot-ikot nang hindi ka pa nagkakalos. Ang margin of safety po ay above your break-even point. So, kung meron kang margin of safety at i-multiply mo po siya sa contribution margin ratio mo, yun ay net income mo kasi your contribution margin that is related sa iyong margin of safety, yun ay yung profit mo kasi at break-even point, na-cover na lahat ng fixed cost. So, anything that will go above your break-even point, which is your margin of safety, if you get the contribution margin portion of that sale, yun na agad yung profit mo. Kasi nga, pag angat mo ng break-even point, may profit ka na. Okay? So, sana naiintindihan nyo siya on that perspective. Okay. So, paano naman po kapag ka may sales mix and yung konsepto po natin ng weighted average contribution margin. Sales mix refers to the relative proportions in which a company's products are sold. The idea is to achieve the combination or mix that will yield the greatest amount of profits. Okay? Kunyari, multiple product line ka, paano mo kukuha ng break-even point kung multiple product line ka? Ito po yung pag-uusapan natin dito sa section na to. Okay. Calculate the break-even point in the following sales mix, both in units and peso sales. So, paano daw po kumuha ng break-even point kung sakaling tatlo naman po yung products ng company? Ang binigay po sa inyo is product A, B, and C. Ito po yung kanyang individual selling prices. And then, ito po yung mga variable cost per unit niya. And then, ang sales mix daw po is kapag ka nakakabenta daw si company, 20% ng product A yung total sales nila. 
20% ng product B, yung total sales. And then, 60% ng total sales nila is galing naman kay C. Ulitin ko, mali yung sentence. 20% ng total sales nila is si A daw po nagka-contribute. 20% ng sales nila si B ang nagka-contribute. And then, 60% ng sales nila si C ang nagka-contribute. And then, your total fixed cost for all of your production is 400,000. So, paano natin kukunin yung break-even point kung yung fixed cost mo ay naka-lump na 400,000? na buo. So, dyan na po papasok yung pagkakompute natin ng break-even point na ikaw po ay naka-multiple product line. O, madali lang po yan. Gagawa mo lang ng matrix. Okay? Magkano selling price ni product A, B, and C? So, 150, 210, 360. Lista mo rin po lahat ng variable cost per unit nila. 90, 140, 190. So, pag pinag-deduct mo, makakakuha ka na po ng CM per unit. 60, 70, 170. 170. Pinagdidak ko lang kasi contribution margin. Kukunin mo po ngayon yung mga sales mix ratio nila which is 20, 20, 60. So, mumultiply mo po ngayon. So, 60 times 20% is 12. 70 times 20% is 14. And 170 times 60 is 102. That is your weighted average contribution margin. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng weighted average contribution margin? Kinuha mo po yung contribution margin base sa sales mix nila. Tsaka mo pag aadin ngayon. 12 plus 14 plus 102, your weighted average contribution margin is 128 pesos. Okay. Ngayon po, yan na po yung gagamitin nyo sa usual formula natin ng break-even point. Your fixed cost of 400,000 divided by weighted average contribution margin per unit, which is 128. Your break-even point is 3,125. So, okay na. Nakakuha tayo ng break-even point. Dapat daw makabenta ka ng 3,125 units. Kaso, Ilan dyan ang product A? Ilan dyan ang product B? Ilan dyan ang product C? So, hindi natin alam. So, what you do is, you just simply multiply it to the sales mix ratio. So, your 3,125 units times 20% for A, so dapat daw 625 units for product A. 20% din daw po kay product B, so 625 units din po kay product B. And then, 60% kay product C, so dapat po kay product C, 1,000. 875 units. Ngayon, kung tatanungin kayo, magkano na po ang break-even point natin in case that peso sales na po yung tinatanong? You just simply multiply the number of units to their respective selling prices. So, for A, it's 625 times 150. Ito po yun. For B, it's 625 times 210. And for C, it's 1875 times 360. So, dapat daw po ang sales level mo to break-even in product A is 93,750. For B, it's 130 250 and 4C is 675,000. And that's how you do your break-even point in a multiple product line setup. Ngayon naman po ang pag-uusapan po natin is your concept of operating leverage. Operating leverage represents the relationship between the entity's fixed cost and variable cost. Okay? Ang leverage po kasi ay in physics, kung ano pa yung small force, yun pa daw po yung nagbibigay ng malaking effect. No? So, applying it in our discussion, makikita nyo po mamaya kung ano yung small force na yun na nagbibigay ng malaking effect. Okay. Now, an entity with high fixed cost tends to have a high operating leverage like, for example, airline industry. Usually, ang fixed cost po niya ay mas mataas po sa variable cost niya. Now, These are our things na kailangan maintindihan about operating leverage. An entity with a high operating leverage can expect net income going up when sales increases because fixed cost will still remain the same. No, parang ang dating because yun naman po ang alam natin konsepto ng fixed cost, tumaas bumaba ang sales, yun pa rin naman siya. So, kapag ka daw po mataas ang fixed cost ng company, mataas ang operating leverage. Pag mataas ang operating leverage, pag umangat ang sales, malaki rin daw po ang magiging effects sa net income, tataas din daw po. And similarly, if an entity with a high operating leverage, they can expect net income going daw po, uh, going down, When sales decreases, because they will still incur fixed costs and up until they suffer losses. So, ang mga yari naman daw po kapag kabumababa yung sales natin, expect po bababarin talaga ang net income mo pag mataas ang operating leverage mo. Bakit? 
yun pa rin naman yung ma incur mo na fix ko. So, may tendency ka na hindi lang bumaba ang net income, baka magka-loss ka pa. Lagyan natin ng numero para mas maintindihan nyo. The degree of operating leverage measures how well an entity generates profit kung paano nila laruin ang fixed cost. Okay? So, your degree of operating leverage or your oper operating leverage factor can be obtained by dividing your contribution margin to your net income. Okay? So, tingnan nga natin kung paano mangyayari using problem 6. Determine the DOL or the degree of operating leverage of the following entity. So, magkaibang company daw po si A and B and then interpret natin. Pansinin muna natin siya. Yung sales nila parehong 3 million. Pero, pagtingin sa fixed cost, mas malaki ang fixed cost ni company A kasi, kasi kay company B. Pero pareho lang sila ng net income. Pero sino kaya sa kanila ang mas mataas ang degree of operating leverage based on the theories that we discussed kanina. Sabi natin, pag mataas ang fixed cost, dun daw mataas ang operating leverage. Ngayon, compete natin para mas maintindihan natin. Okay. Ang contribution margin ni company A is 2,700,000. Sorry, hindi ko na lang na-label dito. Parang kayo, walang label. Okay. And then, ang net income naman po natin is 1,700,000. So, pag-divide lang po natin, your degree of operating leverage is 1.59. Ano mo ibig sabihin nun? Oh, check natin. Wait lang. Next. Your contribution margin naman for company B is 2,100,000 and your net income is 1,700,000. Your degree of operating leverage is 1.24. Paano naman po natin i-interpret yan? Una, sabi natin kanina, pag mataas ang fixed cost, dun mas mataas ang degree of operating leverage. What will now be your interpretation? If both company A and company B experience 10% increase in sales, ang net income ni company A tataas by 15.9%. Okay? Pero si company B, dahil ang operating leverage factor niya ay 1.24 lang, ang net income niya mag increase lang ng 12.4%. But here is the bad news. If both entities experience 10% naman pa-decrease ng sale, ang net income ni company A, bababa naman ng 15.9%. Pero kay company B, ang mararanasan niyang decrease naman in net income, 12.4% lang. Okay, so ganun po natin gamitin yung analysis ng degree of operating leverage. Pag mataas ang fixed cost, expect mo ang operating leverage mataas. Pero pag mataas ang operating leverage mo, mas mataas ang effect kapag ka tumaas ang uh, sales mo, expect mo net income mo talagang tataas din. Okay? But similarly, pag mataas ang operating leverage mo, pag bumaba ang sales mo, automatically sure yun yung net income mo talagang lalagapak din. Okay, and that is our discussion for cost, volume, profit analysis. And our next lesson is activity-based costing and service cost allocations. Again, please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button to alert you of the next video lesson. Please comment down your questions, suggestions, and reactions. And if you want to be featured, send me your photo in my email. Maraming salamat po for listening and this has been Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. To God be all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you and have a great day. Sarangeo. Bye.